Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit. And today we are continuing our Sitka layering guide review series with a Sitka gloves comparison and a Sitka beanie review here. I've got five pairs of Sitka gloves and three of the Sitka beanies that we're going to go over best uses, uh, how I use them over the last couple of years, where I've been testing them, and what situations they worked best in. So as you're building your own Sitka layering system and gloves kit, uh, you can pick what is going to work best in uh, for your own situation and your own hunting scenarios. So come along as we do this. We always appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Links to that down in the description, as well as a link to our website, backlistpursuit.com. A ton of other gear reviews over there. And I'll put a link to all these gloves and beanies in the description for you so you can check them out for yourself. Let's dive into this review. All right, to get started, what do we have here? On the beanie side, we've got the Jetstream beanie. Here is, we have the Stratus beanie and the Blizzard beanie. And then on the glove side, we've got the Ascent gloves, the Traverse gloves, the uh, Mountain gloves, the Stormfront GTX gloves, and the Blizzard GTX mittens. So I was able to use all of these out in the field and get a good idea of what works best. So let's start here on the beanie side. The Jetstream beanie is made a lot like their Jetstream jacket. It's very lightweight, but very yet very warm. It's a fleece line on the interior and does a really good job for active style hunting. And I found this to be something that, you know, for me, temperatures, you know, below freezing. I, I don't typically wear a beanie too much until it gets below you know, 35 degrees maybe or so. But this is the one I threw on for that and it worked really well. Um, it works especially well with a hood. If you like hoods in your jacket, you throw that over the top if it gets even colder. So it combines really well with that. You do have a DWR treated on the outside and the Gore-Tex Infinium, which is awesome at stopping wind. So it really protects you that way. It has the same material on the shell as the Jetstream jacket. Uh, so nice and durable. And again, really wind resistant that way. The difference between that and the Stratus beanie, this is more in their Whitetail series, has the, the, the fleece on the outside so it's softer and a little bit quieter. Not that that's a huge deal with the beanie, but it's a little bit softer. It also has the Gore-Tex Infinium, so it stops wind really well. This is actually in their Whitetail line again. Um, but this one has a unique feature in a little the cutouts here for the ears, so it allows you to here better than with the Jetstream or any of the other beanies here because it got little little perforations through there and allows you uh, ear ports, is, I think is what they call them, so that, that you can hear is really, really well. Now that for some people is a really big deal, especially in whitetail hunting, but also in Western big game hunting. So I found this really useful uh, if you're walking around or you know, in a setup waiting for an animal to come in, you throw that on to keep warm, but you can still hear the leaves crunching, that sort of thing. So that's a really cool design and it worked really, really well. I was surprised how well you could hear through that versus some of the others. Uh, it was really impressive that way. Now to the Blizzard beanie here, this has a two layer high loft Berber fleece on the interior, really, really warm. Uh, exterior is DWR treated uh, and also has the Gore-Tex Infinium. So it does awesome with cutting the wind if you have windy conditions. Um, I found this to be just super warm, something I pulled out when temperatures really dropped, say below 20 or even in the teens and single digits to grab this. It did an awesome job that way. Comes in about three and a half ounces, so it's the heaviest of the beanies. These are both about an ounce and a half or so, so they're super lightweight. Not that weight is a huge consideration there, but as you can tell, it's not nearly as compact. The uh, High Loft Berber, fle Berber Fleece does not compact nearly as well as either of these, but uh, this is going to be more of a type of a, a deal where you're, if you're not doing a lot of hiking, um, this is going to be what you pull out. You'll, you'll overheat, overheat pretty quickly in that if you're doing a lot of hiking around. So those are the beanies I just used. They all certainly have their place and used all of them in different situations. Really, really nice that way. Now moving over to the Ascent gloves here. These are a unique glove. I didn't know that I would like these all that much when I saw them described on the website, uh, but they are a lot like the Ascent material on the back of the hand, which is interesting. And then on the, the front of the hand here, you've got a, a suede material. Um, it's really, really, uh, a form fitting so this is a high dexterity kind of a glove and so it's meant to, it's or it's great for archery season you can still use the release with these really well um, you do have the, the conductivity here so if you need to use your smartphone or whatnot with the thumb and the, the finger there it works well that way but as you can see fits really really well uh, really snug again the back is that ascent shirt material ascent pants material and the, the palm here is a suede so really good dexterity really good durability as well um, it's not going to, of course, be super warm, but it's more of a concealment or if on those chilly mornings in archery season when you're you know, carrying your bow around that can you know, pull the energy out of your hands or pull the, uh, the warmth out of your hands really, really 
quickly. So gloves like that, especially with that suede palm, does a really good job of keeping you warm that way. Super lightweight, like ounce and a quarter, I believe, for these. Uh, super, super lightweight, but a great early season glove. Uh, probably the, the least warm of the gloves that I tested here of these five, but they have their purpose, of course, for early season. Next up is the Traverse glove. These are a polyester spandex material, and they do fit very well also. They're, they're not quite, they don't give you quite as much dexterity as the Ascent glove, but they do fit nice and, and snug that way. I did use these during archery season. They're a little bit warmer than the Ascent gloves, so they worked well that way also. They don't have quite the grip uh, because they don't have a suede uh, uh, palm or anything. They just have little, little, uh, little rubber, glip, uh, rubber grip pieces in there, little indentations or whatnot. They work okay, but they don't have great grip. Um, they do have the conduct conductivity there, so if you need your smartphone, you can use these as well. Um, on the interior, you can see here, it's a, a microgrid type of a fleece, so they are a bit warmer than the Ascent glove. Um, for me, sizing on all of these was very consistent. I wear an XL glove, and then all of these are XL, and they fit great. Um, so for me, uses on the Traverse glove were early season, getting into later September, early October, if temperatures weren't too cold, they did a good job that way for good for active hunting as well they're not overly warm that way one other use for these is you can pair them with the stormfront gtx glove we'll go over that in a minute and use them as a liner for that to add warmth to that glove but these work well as a standalone also uh, next up let's look at the mountain glove uh, these are kind of a unique glove um, they're almost like a a leather work glove because the palm here is is a high high quality leather um, and so they, they feel like your favorite pair of leather work gloves, at least on the palm, but on the backhand side, they are, they're like a, the, the mountain pant material. So they're kind of unique that way. Um, they're pretty heavy duty, they're a lot more heavy duty than I thought they were gonna be uh, based on what I was seeing on, on the, the description and whatnot online. So again, they've got the Berber fleece, or not the Berber fleece, the, the micro grid, low loft type of a fleece on the interior. Because of that, they're really not that warm. Um, I felt like the Traverse gloves were every bit as warm as these. Maybe that was just me, but I felt like, you know, they, they just are not a warm glove. So if that's what you're not, if that's what you're going for, don't get these. Uh, but they work really well for a lot of situations. DWR treated, they're going to shed some of that rain. They're going to work way better than that, than the Traverse that way, because these just soak up any rain. They don't have any of that, those properties. So they're going to do a lot better that way in the rain. Say, I, I also found these really useful. Uh, you know, cold weather hunting, if you're active, they, they're not going to overheat that way. They give you really good grip on the palm and the fingers because of that leather, but also they work really well if you're setting up, say, your hot tent, um, and using tent stakes, that kind of thing. So really durable, have to gather wood for your fire, that sort of thing. They work really, really well that way. They're super durable. You don't have to worry about tearing up gloves like these, uh, you know, doing those kinds of activities. So they certainly have their place. They're a little bit heavier, certainly, than, than the Traverse gloves. 4.9 ounces so you know certainly certainly that and not nearly as compact they don't really uh, you know compress down like some of the others but you know they have their place depending on what you're what you're using them for but I did use them in, in a number of different ways you can put a real thin liner underneath these but they are designed to fit really snug so you're not going to get too much in that that regard as far as liners next to the Stormfront GTX glove these are an awesome waterproof a three layer Gore-Tex waterproof glove uh, they are they fit really well for a uh, uh, for a glove that is as warm as these are. They articulate really well. You can see the fingers just naturally curve, and they fit they fit really uh, really well and articulate well for the type of glove that they are. They do have a little bit of your rubberized fingertips and in the palm there for grip and whatnot. They do a really good job that way. They're super durable. They're pretty lightweight, um, but they're not overly overly bulky that way. They don't certainly compress down. Again, the more you go up uh, this scale, the less compressible they are going to be. But they're waterproof. And one of the cool things about this is you do have this removable liner. So you can take that out if you just want to use the shell. If you just need the, water, the rain protection, they get really, really lightweight that way. Um, but you know, I would recommend using these if you have any kind of cold weather. Uh, they don't, there's not a way for them to, to stick in there per se. Uh, there's not like a Velcro or anything on the interior to keep the, the liner staying, uh, sticking in there. But I didn't have any problem with that going on and off with these. It pulls off just fine without the liner coming out with those gloves. Um, of course, your hands get wet, that might change, uh, but they keep your hands dry, so that's the purpose of that. So really nice glove, uh, really, really durable. I really enjoyed using those. They're pretty warm. Uh, again, not as warm as the mittens, but war it's definitely warmer than the, the mountain gloves and either of these. And you could throw these on the interior underneath both of these layers 
I did that, but it's a little bit snug. Um, I would recommend if you're going to add any li any liners to these, some of those super lightweight like merino type liners that are really, really thin, they go well underneath that. Now moving over to the Blizzard uh, mittens here. Oh, and I forgot to mention the, the weight on these is 7.4 ounces for the, the Stormfront GTX. So they are fairly lightweight, especially for as warm as you've got those. Um, but these, the, uh, the Blizzard mittens here, these are your cold weather type of gloves. Of course, they're mittens, so dexterity is not going to be real great on these. And they're nice and long, so they come all the way up your, your arm that way to really protect you. They're Gore-Tex, so they're waterproof. But the cool thing about these is that you do have, on the interior, there's Velcroed in here. You've got the, uh, the, the insulation piece here. These are like an insulation mitt. And this is super lightweight. You could use this all by itself if you wanted to. Really, really nice and lightweight. Uh, so if you don't need the weather protection, you can shed that shell. And then, of course, that protects you from wind as well. But it's that Primaloft Gold insulation. And it's really lightweight, nice and compressible. And you've got the Velcro on both sides to keep that in there. It will come out on you if you pull it out. Uh, I did have it happen a few times, so you'll be a little bit careful when you're taking these off and on uh, to make sure you grab the liner and the glove. And then just make sure that Velcro is strapped or uh, reattached there. But these are just your cold weather gloves. They're nice leather palm. Uh, they give you a pr actually pretty good dexterity because that that, uh, that primal off gold insulation combined with the material here, it, it did pretty well for a mitten. Uh, I used these in a number of situations where it was just downright cold out. They're awesome if you're, say, riding a four-wheeler, motorcycle, something like that. That's when your hands really get just frosty cold. They're great for that. Or if you're just glassing you know, on a, on a windy hillside, need that extra protection. And what I found to work really well with these also, if you need a little bit extra warmth, you can go ahead and throw these Traverse gloves and you're really going to have a ton of warmth or one of those lightweight merino style liners. And what I found to work really well about that is to say if you're having a glove like this on and you go to throw on your, your, uh, your mitten like this, you obviously get the extra warmth. It's a ton extra warmth. But then if you need to pull this off for some reason to you know, you know, do something, mess with your binoculars or, or whatever, you still have a glove so you're not getting you know, cold again. Uh, so that, and there's plenty of space in here to use this kind of a liner. So you can add extra warmth. It's, a, it's an expedition fit type of a mitten. So you can add more to that. Really like these. And they were just really, really nice and warm. They definitely, they kept my hands warm on days when I would have otherwise been pretty miserable as far as hands getting cold. So uh, that is the Sitka glove lineup. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned these are 8.8 .8 ounces uh, for the pair. So they're a little heavier weight, of course, bulk, more bulky but definitely worth it in cold weather. As we know, everything cold weather gets bigger and bulkier. So that's the Sitka gloves and beanie lineup, the ones I was able to test over the last couple of years. Definitely drop any questions or comments on any of these. Love to help you out and get you pointed in the right direction. Again, I'll put links to all this down in the description for you so you can check it out for yourself if any of this looks like something you want to add to your kit. Thanks for joining us here today. We'll see you next time.